It's unfortunate that we have someone on the stage who is attempting to be the Democratic nominee for President of the United States, who during the Obama administration spent four years full time on Fox News criticizing President Obama. That's who ridiculous. Has spent full time, That's who ridiculous. has spent full time criticizing people on this stage as affiliated with the Democratic Party. What, what Senator Harris is doing is unfortunately continuing to traffic in lies and smears and innuendos because she cannot challenge the substance of the argument that I'm making, the leadership and the change that I'm seeking to bring in our foreign policy, which only makes me guess that she will, as president, continue the status quo, continue the Bush-Clinton-Trump foreign policy of regime change wars. Well, goddamn, that got extremely testy very quickly. And it makes sense because Tulsi Gabbard and uh, Kamala Harris have exchanged not so pleasantries in the past. Uh, back uh, in a past debate, Tulsi Gabbard specifically went after Kamala Harris, which seemed to be a part of her debate strategy. And after the debate, Kamala Harris had something to say that many people took as very arrogant and is, uh, kind of funny in hindsight. Well, I mean, listen, I, th this is going to sound immodest, but I'm obviously a top tier candidate. And so I did expect that I would be on the stage and take hits tonight because there are a lot of people that are trying to make the stage for the next debate. Right. Yeah, it's do, for a lot of them, it's do or die. Well, yeah, and especially when people are at zero or 1% or whatever she might be at. And so I did expect that I might take hits tonight. Yeah, right now, Kamala Harris in a Real Clear Politics uh, polling average is polling at 4.3% average. Tulsi Gabbard's polling at 2%. Uh, you're certainly not in the top tier anymore. Now, look, you know, when we're talking about regime change wars, I think Gabbard has a lot of credibility on many regime change wars, a lot of not so much credibility when it comes to issues like the Gujarat riots and when it comes to fascists like Modi, among others. Uh, but she at least is making a case there where Kamala Harris is just saying, Bleh, right? Like she has nothing to say. And what amused me so much about that was that Tulsi did not even mention Kamala Harris in, uh, the, in the question that was asked of her in that response. Um, we can't show you the whole thing just because it's so long, but uh, the, the moderator prompted Harris to respond and said, did you have anything to say on the substance of that? Because Tulsi was going on about regime change wars. And instead of talking about the substance of what she said, where she could have brought up those inconsistencies, Kamala Harris, she goes, oh, you've criticized other Democrats up on this stage. Oh. And, and gone on Fox News. Like, I think the Fox News thing is a greater indicator of maybe what Tulsi will do uh, post, post political career. And like, yes, it's problematic in itself, but why are you not talking about the substance of what she said? And again, she thought she was above uh, going after Tulsi Gabbard back then because she's a top tier candidate. Of course, she's gonna try to bring me down. It's so funny though, because you're going after her when she didn't even specifically mention you, right? Like how ironic is that? And kind of pathetic. So in a battle of, of candidates who are not going to win the nomination, and I think, you know, both have significant problems in their record, uh, Tulsi definitely came out on top there and made Kamala Harris look sad because anyone that pays attention and watch that post game uh, interview at, at, with, I believe, CNN, where she said she was a, a, a top tier candidate is gonna cringe at the fact that, yeah, Harris is now uh, voluntarily going after Tulsi Gabbard when she's not so much of a top tier candidate, huh? Hmm.